The Independent National Electoral Commission says it will take a second look at the functionality of the bimodal voter accreditation system BVAS after the technological glitches experienced at the November 6 Anambra election. Reacting to the development, INEC Commissioner for Information and Voter Education, Festus Okoye, says the Commission will look into what went wrong with BVAS during the election. He explains that beavers came in free consignments, but that the electoral body is having problems with one of the holes. INEC says it will speak with its ICT department and technical consultants to decipher what went wrong. Thanks. All right, well, to discuss uh, the outcome of the Anambra governorship elections and other matters arising, we're joined by Honorable Valentine Aika, a political strategist in the Valentine Ozibo campaign organization, and a rise analyst, Dr. Sam Amadi. Gentlemen, both of you are welcome to News Night. Let me start with you, uh, Dr. Sam. The die, uh, one would say it the way it said, for Saluda, die is cast. What should be his primary responsibility now? He's won the election. Well, I think he has started dealing with that. The first is to create um, a sense of belonging. And he made it clear, the Anambra spirit, like he put it. So, interestingly, most of the major uh, candidates have you know, called to congratulate uh, from Ifanyoba, Valentine, um, and some other, and of course, Peter B himself. So, uh, we'll perhaps as we wait for uh, the, the APC candidate too. So he first has to create that level of you know de-escalation. So right now we move from politics that's competitive and usually quarrelsome to governance that's uh, inclusive and cooperative. So that's the second. I mean, Soludo comes almost fully formed. He, he has been in government at highest level. He has run. He has done. He has co competed for this election for three times. At each of those periods, he had come out with clear policy direction manifesto. His famed Dubai, Taiwan, Singapore network. Now, so this is time now to start doing, you know, getting these things done. And interestingly, he has a lot of uh, human capital to leverage on. He has uh, a st strong party that has been there. I don't forget that P2V was with Afghan. Afghan did eight years, did very well, and maybe has also done eight years. So okay. basically, he has institutional memory to, to drive uh, the, the uh, governance. Uh, basically, uh, you know, get everybody in, move everybody in, and then find a way that Anambra becomes what it's supposed to be, the light of the nation in terms of technology, in terms of economic development, and of okay. course in terms of stable governance. All right, let's uh, bring in uh, Valentine Anyuka. Well, uh, Soludo has said he's not coming on the job as a learner. Uh, let me ask you the same question. If you were in a position to set an agenda uh, for Chukuma Soludo, what would that agenda be based, I mean, considering, you know, the security situation and other, uh, you know, uh, issues around Anambra and the Southeast? Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, first of all, mentally, our government is about the security and welfare of the people, as we have it in Section 14 to be of our constitution. Uh, basically, you know, uh, build up to this election, there were serious um, security challenges, and um, which also form the basis, from, you know, some of our stakeholders, because, you know, Anambra people were highly um, widely traveled people. Most of us are based outside, they didn't come. Uh, it's important that the security issue. Um, also, to of um, infrastructure. I remember him saying um, on the 17th of March 2022, the moment he's um, sworn in, he to start clearing um, the debris there and all. Who will expect him to, um, you know, always um, make it? to his uh, manifesto which he presented to Anambra people, deliver the dividends of democracy. Um, there is so much important that um, 
like a pilot using a compass, you know, up there in the air, he should be guided manifesto. And I must say also that um, I'm always very proud of Chine Tozibo with the innovations he brought campaign, with the issue-based campaign that um, he instituted and he followed. And also for his um, sportsman's, uh, sportsmanship uh, spirit, you know, calling um, Professor Soludo to congratulate him. That's um, part of what we need, you know, um, for, uh, for Soludo to concentrate, um, according to him, uh, the um, victory is for Anambra people. Um, Soludo, of course, like um, Dr. Sama Amadi said, is not um, as a greenhorn. I think um, he's held positions that must have prepared him, just like Valentine, if he had made it. Um, any of the two, uh, of course, I believe, will help Anambra to really uh, All right. to uh, really uh, we'll hold it practically there. Hear the we'll news of you now. The uh, Sam, of the, the president uh, commended the security agencies and INEC for successfully overseeing the election. Uh, what do you make of the president's comment in the light of the same that the commissioner of police in Anambra said, uh, he said Anambra people are quite peaceful and it was the most peaceful election that they had uh, ever had to oversee? Well, I think, okay, as of course, it was a very peaceful election. Contrary to expectation, we didn't see any significant security breach. Again, the president can take some glory that... Uh, uh, expectedly, the president didn't. There was no uh, further intervention of the sort that clearly uh, tilted the balance towards one party or the other. INEC appeared to be very dependent, and which even in spite of the security hitches, uh, sorry, logistic hitches, INEC uh, anywhere that had flaw, it was a flaw of logistics, not of political partisanship or loss of integrity. And I think Soludo summarizes by saying, "Look, this is a great election. We can always improve, and if we keep this improvement." we we'll get to a point where our elections will be beyond shadow of doubt, as credible. And that's really the biggest uh, takeaway here, is that, look, governance comes after, but this election that was peaceful, largely, election that deferred, and well, kudos to INEC uh, for IPOP too, for calling off this on time, uh, to also not make it to become a totally, you know, very low turnout. So even with that, or if it works together. So Mr. President has a bragging right here, that, you know, an office in election, we are his party, had a chance of probably winning, and they ended up, you know, losing in a significant way. And, and, and no position, none of the candidates had accused the federal government of any inter interference in the process. Mm. Nobody has accused INEC of bias of political partisanship. We can't say, like uh, Valentine said, look, INEC came short in some significant uh, managerial aspect that may have uh, affected the quality of the election, but not the partisanship. So this is yeah. a good time for democracy, for the country, and for a number of people. All right, great. Uh, Valentine, I mean, you, you did mention uh, earlier that uh, Valentine Ozubo gallantly congratulated uh, the winner, um, Chukuma Soludo. But he raised some issues about INEX, uh, you know, shortcomings and, uh, uh, of course, other uh, issues of security and all of that, that, that. I mean, security was more or less absent in many of the polling uh, units. What do you have to say about that? And, of course, INEX says it will look, look into the BVAS uh, system going forward. Yeah, I come to think about it... Um the beavers machine, I must say, disenfranchised a whole lot of people. Um, some people tried up to seven times. Um, the beavers could still not capture them. They were not allowed to vote. You know, um, a state that registered about 2.45 million people and eventually the governor is elected by about 200,000 persons. What percentage of the registered voters is that? It really doesn't um, speak well of... Yeah, I mean, materials were deployed on time. 
Uh, but the beavers, I think, really need to be critically looked at again. Um, it really, the performance was far below expectation. A lot of people were disenfranchised. And again, there are still some security issues because I really uh, policemen are posted to um, pulling units and they are not armed. People are, so in some places, they were so ruly, they overcome the policemen. Um, people will vote, they will expose where they voted because they will, be, you know, they will be given money, they will be given semovita or gare or things like that. But if I think well equipped, you know, they can stop that from happening because. You see, it's still not um, all right, Valentine. It be. Let's, uh, uh, let's let me take you yeah, to on uh, this. Uh, yeah. th thank you, there, Valentine. Uh, uh, Dr. Sam, justice. Last question before we set you free. Now, the chairman of ABGA, uh, Victoria, says INEC has set a pace, actually, an example worthy of emulation, and that the, the you know governor elect will have to replicate his success. Uh, at the CBN. Now the question is, do you expect INEC to take what they have done to the next level? Sure, I do. I do, and that's the logical thing. Again, INEC has to come under big st stricture and uh, condemnation for failing to perfect their act. This is a small scale election. It's an office election, and INEC didn't deliver as expected. So in terms of logistics, it's a managerial challenge. And so why we look at INEC and give them a thump up for dealing with integrity issues, processes that are much more reliable, accountable, and transparent. We now have to worry about efficiency, and that goes to the managerial aspect. We now look at the technological you know, capability of INEC to procure and deploy technology. See, the debate around technology is always about, oh, should we go, there will be hitches, and there will be. now INEC's failure to really, um, you know, give a clear proof of, proof of competence in managing security end-to-end creates a, a, you know, a problem for those who are pushing back and saying, do not put too many technology. But I think I should continue with the technology, but it should really now focus on building a capacity to deploy seamless and efficient. We have okay. seen, we have climbed up on integrity, but we're still very low on managerial competence, and that's what we should do. Yeah, and still very low on uh, voter turnout. Only 10% of the 2.5 million actually uh, turned out in this uh, election. Well, we'll take a short break. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Dr. Samamadi and Valentine Anika.